Hey what is up guys, today we're doing a clan profile today on Premium Grand Blue. Today I'll be discussing which deck I believe is better in Premium, Night Rose or Basker. Keep in mind that this video is entirely my opinion, so if you have your own, please share in the comments down below which you think is better. Today I'll be going over which deck is better, again, as well as the pros and cons of each deck as a way to show you which deck is better. And I'll be going over the pros and cons of each deck. Uh, to shed a little bit of light on both of the decks now in their current state as well as to help you pick which premium deck is for you So whether you're a returning player to premium a new player to premium or a transitioning player to premium from Gier or Veer, I hope this video helps you out in some way shape or form. So without further ado, let's get started So we're gonna start off with Nairos. So her pros is that her GB2 got better in a sense with the new Watch Return ruling change her GB2 is no longer restricted to the first unit that dies because before the first unit that died on your board um, during either player's turn, you have to use your GB2 right then and there, or else it's locked for the rest of the turn. Now, with the new once turn ruling change, it's fixed. So, you got a major buff. As well as your GB2 provides so much things at the end, at the end of the turn. It can provide you with more counter charge, with a draw, with a deterrent. It can provide so much, which I will explain in a future video for this deck. Another pro for this uh, boss monster is that her stride break skill is actually really, really important. In the sense that, on your first stride, in both decks, in Basquiat and in Night Rose, is generally your weakest and even if you're on Roseid and you have let's say you have no face up uh, G-Zone cards you can only call two in either deck with Roseid's skill as well as with the stride break skill at least you can call one more unit for the counter blast of one so you don't have to c use any cards from your hand to further call so that's why I think her stride break skill is super important in the early game especially with the game becoming faster and faster and faster you need to get that aggro out as fast as possible with the least amount of kickbacks and hand reductions uh, another pro for Night Rose is that re-riding with her feels super fluid in the sense that you can ride from Undead Dragon, which is your own Protect Marker unit in a Night Rose deck, and then go into Night Rose. What this does is that if you need the Protect Marker, you can ride Undead Dragon and get a 12k base for defensive value. And then the following turn, you can ride Night Rose to get the Stride Break and the GB2 Deterrent and Resource Management. So riding in Night Rose feels so much more fluid and versatile than in Basker. I mean... Riding for protect markers is good, but you're only really gonna get one or two protect markers in a game with Baskirk. So if you're only gonna get about one or two, why not do it in Night Rose where you can get a protect marker right in the beginning, and then if you need to, you can get right again over Night Rose just for the strike break and the turn, right? And that's the argument over here is that people say that Baskirk auto is automatically better than Night Rose simply because it's 12k base and has a protect marker which I don't believe that's the case because because the 12k base is really situational when it comes to more effective guarding there's only a select amount of decks that the 1k difference really matters and it's really none of the current uh, meta decks such as OTT Tom or Angie Tra so honestly the 1k difference doesn't really matter the protect marker kinda does but we're usually running multiple copies of Undead Dragon and Night Rose so we can at least get one on protect marker in our games, which is the same for Bastard, because usually you discard the Protect Marker Grade 3s, usually the Stride, because if you don't see your Stride Fodders, you're not gonna use them to Stride for obvious reasons. Another pro for Night Rose is that you always have access to the Night Rose name, so you have access to Negro Lazy and Negro Bone for the entirety of the game, which is not really a pro and a con here because they're, of course, archetype restricted, but it's nice having those two units. Um, in deck building for this deck. Another pro for Night Rose, which I think is really important to notice, is that her milling is much more beneficial than any units in Basquiat. What I mean by that is that her milling can get you so many things such as a counter charge again, a deterrent again, or more draw. As well as her milling actually speeds up the drop zone. It's not piece reliant. The moment you're on this Vanguard, which you can search with a stride fodder, you are milling three at the end of turn. So you don't need to rely on cards like Ruin Shade in this deck for the mill to speed up the drop zone to get dragon bigger and to get more key units out. So that's why I think her GB2 is now a plus in this sense. And lastly, the last pro for Night Rose in terms of being a boss monster is ample, ample, ample resource management and versatility in the deck. Because you can still run one of in this deck just because of her stride break, her GB2, and the overall kit that this boss monster provides. So now we go on to the cons of Night Rose. The cons of Night Rose is that, of course, again, it's an 11k base. It's not really much of a con, but I figured I'd mention it now because that's going to be a point that's going to be hammered down by everyone else 
It's an 11k base, that's a con. Another con is that it has no protect marker. Again, obvious reasons why people think this is immediately better than Night Rose. Another con for this is that going on grade 3 first with a Night Rose Vanguard um, is actually weaker than Bastard because Bastard you can at least call a unit and get an aggro out. While with Night Rose you just basically ride then swing and you're not even going to get a protect marker out of it. But again, that's why we have units like Dragon to compensate for that because honestly you're going to draw into Dragon a lot. So and you're going to use your stride fodders to really search this for the optional riding. So basically before you even hit grade 3 you usually have the option of riding into a 12k base with a protect marker or a Night Rose named Vanguard right away. And I think it's worth mentioning that the biggest con so far that I didn't mention before, it's not really much of a con but it's more of a mechanic that's stuck to this deck, is the skill requirement. This deck has a really high skill cap to get a lot out of the deck. So the more you invest into the deck, the more you get out of it. And the more you learn about the deck, the deck will respond to you. Basically, this is a high skill cap deck that requires a decent amount of skill to really get used to and more skill to learn the entirety of the deck. So that's Night Rose in a nutshell. We're gonna go on to Baskirk. The pros of Baskirk are not that much over Night Rose, but the pros is of course a 12k base and a protect marker. We've already been over that. Having the protect marker is really good to kind of stall the game so that you get a good amount of drop zone. Another pro for Baskirk is that being on grade 3 first is the best and most ideal situation for Baskirk because his skills are, if you have 10 or more units in drop, this unit gets 5k and a crit. Usually you won't trip this continuous that early in the game, but if you do, hey, extra crit, right? But going on Baskirk first means that you can use his act, which is Counterblast on Solbass 1, call a unit from your drop zone. This unit itself, so Baskirk himself, gets 5k depending on the grade of the unit that you called. So if you called a grade 2, he gets 10k. If you call the grade 3, he gets 15k, etc. Because now you're beefing up your Vanguard, making it all basically stride numbers almost, and getting a unit on board for kind of a Soul Bus 1, which is a pro for this deck that I feel like does make, put it on top of Night Rose in that sense only. Now we go, we go on to the cons. This is a pretty extensive list, and I'm not trying to be biased here to Night Rose, even though this is my favorite unit in all of Grand Blue. I'm just laying out all the facts for both these decks. What are the real cons of Bastrick and what are the real pros and cons of Night Rose? So now, to continue with the cons for Bastrick, the cons for Bastrick is that it can't efficiently use Night Rose reliant units such as Bone and Lazy, which is not really much of a con again, but it's, it is worth mentioning just so that you have all the facts straight. Another con is that grade 1 and 2 slots are auto filled. Boy, this is something I really dislike about this deck. What I mean is that cards like Ruin Shade or Cut or cards like Cutlass are automatically autofilled in the deck because you need Cutlass to counter charge because you can't counter charge 4 like you would on a Night Rose Vanguard with Grenache. You can only counter charge 2 at most every turn. Then the turns preceding, if you want to use more than 2 counter blast, you have to use Cutlass to refund it in the following turn or during the main phase of that turn. Which goes into my next con, which is you get resource locked in this deck ridiculously fast. When I say re resource locked, what I mean is that usually with Baskirk, assuming you have Grenache available to be hollowed at your disposal, you can only use two counter blasts per turn before it starts cooking you. The amount you counter blast in a turn does matter in Baskirk because if, for example, let's say you counter you counter blast four, you can only counter charge two with Grenache that turn, and then in the following turn you have to counter charge with Cutlass before you use any skills, otherwise you're going to be starting that turn with only two open counter blasts at the minimum, or if any counter blasts at all if you don't have Grenache. Not a bad thing because with Cutlass, you can use Rosea then refund it with Cutlass, but Cutlass is not a reusable card. Once you uh, use the Cutlass or copies of Cutlass, he's no longer in the drop zone. So Cutlass is again not as efficient as Grenache, but he is there to kind of sol mitigate that issue, not really solve it. So Bastard does get resource locked pretty often if you decide to go really, really aggro, really, really fast. Another con for this deck is that it's overly peace reliant. What I said before about running four Cutlasses, running four Romario, running four Ruin Shade, or three to four Ruin Shade is actually so important because this deck needs those pieces to function properly or as well as Night Rose would in under normal circumstances. And being peace reliant means that because without Grenache, your only counter charge engine is Cutlass. And if you don't see multiple copies in Drop Zone, you can't even use him. He's a dead card. So, th so that's what I don't like about Bastrick because it auto fills your units, your grades mostly, as well as a lot of cards are dead and don't synergize as well in in terms of premium. But it still does synergize to the point where the deck still offers what it does. However, I just feel like this is a major con for this deck that I feel like should be put out into the light. Another con for this deck is that going second doesn't give you anything. It just gives you a protect marker. 
which again this deck can do as well but striding aft on a night rose band gives you the stride break and the the deterrent here once you optimize your strides he's a vanilla 12k uh heart which is in premium not that good because you want to have you still want to have stride break skills because premium decks such as victor still need stride break skills this deck is not as optimized in premium yet because of its lack of support but at the same time this being a boss vanguard is definitely showing more cons than pros and lastly the last con for this boss monster is that it doesn't have reliable resource management i feel like i've already gone over this enough but i feel like it's important to hammer down that your resource management here is depending on what you mill aside from Grenache. So if you don't mill Cutlass, you are not going to counter stretch more than two in a turn. So now that that's out of the way, my opinion on which deck is better. Obviously, from what you've heard me say, I'm obviously all for Night Rose. And this is not because I want to bash Baskirk or anything, or I'm trying to bash Baskirk. I just want everyone to know that don't let the 12k base on the Protect Marker dictate how you want your premium deck. If you want to build Bastard, go for it. He has a simpler playstyle and is more player friendly than Night Rose. However, in terms of premium and in terms of the competitive meta, Night Rose cannot be beaten by just a protect marker that you can only get one to two of on most games, which if that's the case, then we can just ride Dragon first or ride Dragon when we need the protect marker rather than just ride Bastard for the protect marker where afterwards he'll just be a 12k vanilla heart and for you to, to get the consistency in getting multiple protect markers you have to keep rewriting. I'm emphasizing rewriting a lot even though it's not really a disadvantage for the deck because it replaces the card you you rewrote with because I'm emphasizing the fact that you have to rewrite multiple times for multiple protect markers because that's the main argument why Bastard is better than Night Rose because you have an easier access to protect markers which is true but you really only need one per, one per game because we have units like Negro Nord that's a superior guard for the drop zone so the Great Restrict is not really much of a problem other than each Tom and even against EG Tom we just have to be faster than EG Tom to really win so overall my overall consensus on which deck is better in terms of competitive meta Nairos is still 100% in the lead over Bastrick but Bastrick is still a great and fun deck to play in premium especially because transitioning from standard Bastrick to premium Bastrick you see to get the G zone and really cost wise all G era decks got shanked in price so if you want to convert to Nairos later because you found that you like the playstyle more She's really cheap. The grade three of her, the grade three copy is really cheap, and there's very many differences between the decks. So you won't really have to spend as much more. The only money cards really, other than high rarity stuff, is the G zone. So with the bosses done, let's move on to the stride zone, which I will compare how the strides work for each of the bosses and which they work better for, and how they overall synergize with both of the decks. So for the stride zone, we're gonna start off first with. Megiddo and Galleon. We're starting with these units because these units are finishers for both the decks. So they're not going to be taken into the equation at all because when both of the decks get to their finishing strides, which are usually these two, um, they're basically equivalent in terms of power output and the uh, combos they do in a sense. So these will not be taken into the equation. So we're going to go over the main card that causes Bastard problems, which is Obadiah. Obadiah is basically a stall one turn to filter three. Without the stride break skill, Obadiah basically costs Basker a card from hand to call for their board. Obadiah is really only good in Night Rose in the sense that you sell the stride skill to at least push out offense or get more draw. This is still good in Baskirk if you need to filter your deck because you didn't see key units, but it's still going to cost you more than it would being on Night Rose. Next we have Dragoot. Dragoot's mainly only better for Bastrick because it gets to call you board. And this doesn't really work for Night Rose as well because of the hollow mechanic. And with Rosé it forcing units to hollow, you won't really have much targets for Dragoot in terms of calling board. But keep in mind when deck building for Bastrick or Night Rose is that this is really only optimal in Bastrick and it's only optimal to a certain degree because since you're running close to no hollow units in Bastrick, you're not gonna get the draw one from Dragoot skill. The most you're gonna do is, is build a column or build or rebuild board for kind of last two, which isn't bad, and that's why that's why there's a Japanese deck that topped with using Dragoot. So that's why I see the value in him now in terms of the premium meta. But again, use with discretion when deck building for Baskirk. Next, you have Negrosonger. This card is better in Baskirk solely for the reason that you can run more copies of this in Baskirk, and technically Baskirk does have a higher milling. So for Negrosonger, she can filter your deck in Bastrick better than Rose. As well as you can utilize Negrosonger better in Bastrick than in Rose because in Rose, our G zone's kind of tight. 
as well as we don't really have much purpose in Negro Song or in Rose because of Dragon now. So we don't really have much of a purpose to kind of stall that. Uh, Negro Song is mainly there for Basquiat because if on the off chance you can no longer call board from hand, you can use Negro Song for one big for an attack, then use his skill to you know counterblast one and call a bigger unit. The only downside to this is that since Basquiat doesn't have a stride break, so you're not gonna get aggro unless you already have board set up for Negro Song or unless you call from hand. So it's another minus. Still, you can run multiple copies in Basquiat just because of that fact. Next, we have Rose, which is obviously 100% better in Nairos because it force hollows the units and it can make units without hollows such as Night Mist retire so you can target it for GB2. So overall Rosé is equivalent in both of the decks however it is better in Nairos because you utilize her auto ability to give 5k to a unit much more frequently and much more efficiently. And the crit on her is oh so juicy for both of the decks. So she is a staple in both decks regardless. Now Tempest Calling King Gosh is actually a weird card for me. In the sense that this card is so good in Night Rose now, but in Basquiat, it just heavily shanks Basquiat in a sense. I'm always saying in a sense because it doesn't fully shank the Basquiat deck. Because it's basically the same as Roseate, but you're using your soul more. Basically, this is equivalent in both of the decks, however, it's not as good in Basquiat because it's a board setup, yes, and both of the decks generally generate the same amount of soul, so Gauche is equivalent in both of the decks. And as an outlier, we have this card, Phantasm. Phantasm actually got better and is actually a viable tech now in the G-Zone for the reason that it can call units during the battle phase and the units you call don't have to have the hollow ability. Even though Rosette does the same thing, battle phase calling is different in a sense because it, it applies aggro during the battle phase. This is automatically better in Night Rose because in Bastard you need to have the board set up already before you swing with Phantasm, whereas in Nairos you can use your stride skill to set up at least a board or just call a dragon, swing a dragon first, then use this to call dragon and a Grenache. So she actually got better because in Night Rose and in Basquiat, it's beneficial having non-hollow restricted or grade restricted callers. That is why she has now found a place in the G-Zone if you wish to use her. So build a discretion because she is still a counter blast too, but she is another great aggro tech card for the G-Zone. Next we have the exclusion cards. Exclusion cards being that cards that have lost their place due to how the cards panned out and their uses in the new decks for Night Rose and Basquiat. Starlight lost its place in Night Rose and Basquiat because in Night Rose we need the space for Dragon and Night Storm. That's the gist of it. And because Dragon provides a protect marker, the calling with a column doesn't really outscale a big dragon beat stick so she just lost her place in the deck straight up when dragon was introduced she had a good run but you know she's now cut so rest in peace starlight next we have Cerise with the new stride ruling being that if you begin your turn on a Greeta, you can stride normally Cerise immediately lost its place and Cerise before really just shanked night rose of so much counter blast counter blasting too before you even get the stride is such a bad thing especially since cards like Romario are now going in night rose decks and, and cards that require counter blast in the early game, Sea Breezing is no longer worth in Night Rose. Rampage is, is also here because she also lost her place in the deck because even though she is technically quote unquote a 10k chick because 5k in trigger zone and 5k in the rearguards and 5k in vanguard attacks, she's technically a 10k trigger. However, she lost her place in the deck because she's a mandatory draw and she has Night Rose name. So she doesn't have place in Basher because she's Night Rose name required as well as if you're not on Rosea she's useless and Rusty's is not Vanguard restricted and is an act and is a mandatory draw and why run Rampage Shade when you can just run 10k V triggers because you get the 10k on the on the trigger zone as well as you get a 15k shield so Rampage Shade sadly even though she has a very gorgeous SP did lose her place in the deck and last we have Seawall Banshee that lost her place in the deck prime example of why she lost her place in the deck is because we don't really need the grade 1 slots anymore the grade 1 slots can be used for better cards. And a good example of this is with the recent topping of Spike Brothers. With the recent topping of Spike Brothers, it showed us that if your deck is fast enough and if you play your deck to its maximum potential, you don't need the Sentinels for Ichi, for Ichi Tom or Gize. You just need to play smart and be a good player. And you can run 4 drop PGs if you want. You can still run Seawall, but I feel like she did definitely lose her place in the deck because by the time you need her in hand, you, you need both copies in drop zone. And if you don't see both copies in drop zone by the time you need her, you basically just kill the slot. And she's a dead card until you see the other copy of her. And there are games where the protect marker is just more convenient 
getting than her. I'd rather Rad didn't get the protect marker than just soul blast one and replace a card from my hand. And if that card is a is a 15k shield that I have to drop, it kind of minuses if there's a grade restricting unit on the opponent side of the board. That's why Sea Will lost her place. So these are the cards that sadly lost her place in the deck. You can still by all means use them. However, they are now way less awful than they used to be. And to wrap up this profile, we have this zone, the Basket Night Rose zone. So on the top, we have cards that Night Rose uses the best, and on the bottom, we have cards that Basket uses the best. So first, we're going to go with Night Rose. The cards that obviously Night Rose uses the best is Negro Bone. Negro Bone because Night Rose Vanguard, always having the Night Rose name is really good, and Battle Phase Calling is really good. Lazy because again, Night Rose name when you get the counter to Soul Charge because you have a Night Rose Vanguard, and... Of course, you get to replenish your soul. At, you get to replenish your soul and filter and cycle your soul, so that cards will not always be stuck in soul. As well as basically, this is like the OG V Night Mist, so deterrence with Night Rose GB2. Negro Lily is 100% better in Night Rose because even though it is a 10k shield in Basker, the Counter Blast, and again because Basker can get resource locked, Negro Lily is best in Night Rose because the Counter Blast one doesn't really detriment her and this card triggers her GB2. Head Start is better in Night Rose because Head Start's really a call with a stride skill and is better off in Night Rose because Night Rose's great one zone is really relaxed. You don't have much auto field cards, so you can definitely run a one of of her. Running one of in Basker really does detriment the deck and really makes the deck kinda slow in my opinion. And lastly, we have Tommy to go see Brother One because you, you can actually search out for your main Vanguard with this card and it's a stride fodder. That's the only reason why I can search out for Night Rose. The middle is what both the decks can use equally well. Dewey's here because counter charge soul charge for both the decks is super important. PG's are here because both of the decks can equally use these. Same with Rough Seas, both decks can equally use Rough Seas and both benefit from it. Mick because Mick should have gone unbanned in my opinion other than that troll, but he didn't get unrestricted, so Mick is still a good one up because he fills your deck, he's a tanky trigger, a better tanky trigger than Rampage Shade, as well as he's the only stand worth running in the deck. Romario and Ruin Shade are here because both decks can utilize her. Ruin Shade can be put in arrows for, for fast milling and just hit that 13k vanguard base when you have 10 cards in drop zone. For little to no effort. Romario, here, Romario is here because he's a right picture in Night Rose and a 12k boost helps units like Night Storm hit for that sweet spot number of 23k which is the number that you really want to hit just in case your opponent's force Vanguard with a 13k base hits a trigger. Dragon because Dragon's immediately a, an instant of in both decks. Grenache because both decks need the counter charge. Cannoneer because both decks can definitely use the retire and draw. Violent Frank or Hulk. Hogan, because this is the cheese for Gize, which I will explain in the deck profile for both of the decks. Since you can re-ride pretty efficiently in both of the decks, better in arrows in my opinion because of the versatility you have, you can definitely use this card in both the decks really well, and he and tripping him is not the hardest thing in the world. It's actually re relatively easy. And lastly, we have the units that Bastard gives the best. Cutlass for obvious reasons because Nairos doesn't need the counter charge engine because we already have her, our GB2. Nightmist is definitely better in Basket just because of the early game, as well as Basket does tend to mill faster than Night Rose generally, so it's there. Next we have Columbar, which is really only good in Basket because in Night Rose it makes a grade 2 lineup clunky, as well as in Basket you need the battle phase calling other than Night Storm if you don't see it, as well as your grade 2 lineup is pretty free in a sense because Night Rose's grade 2 lineup is kind of tight, as well as Night Rose doesn't really need this because we have access to Lazy and Bone. Commodore Blue Blood is definitely in Bastrick and can only be used in Bastrick in my opinion because you need to run multiple copies of it and with Night Rose's GB3 milling 3, this can actually cause deck out in Night Rose. And lastly, King Serpent. You would figure I would put this in the middle because both decks can use it but Night Rose doesn't need it anymore because the soul problem's gone thanks to Romario. The soul problem's just straight up gone from Night Rose. And the Romario saves the day, I love Romario so much as a booster and as a first ride on grade 1. This is just useful in Bastrick because of, again, that resource lock I talked about. He solves that a little bit, as well as he does fuel soul, so if you if you are using cards that require soul blast in Bastrick, I guess he's there, but then again, your soul does get kinda clunky after a while. So there's that. So that's about everything I have for you today, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and leave in the comments down below which you think is better, if you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, just leave it all in the comments, I, don't, I can't wait to read them. Thanks for watching the video today guys, and just before I let you go here, I just wanted to let you know that there will be deck profiles for both these decks in premium, and for premium, Night Rose, and Bastrick, and a standard deck profile for Bastrick, as well as fight videos for both these decks in premium when the set drops. 
because I don't feel like you guys want to see proxy cars, but I'll also provide proxy fight videos as the time goes on. So, so that's all I have left to say for you guys, and thanks for watching. Peace.